Hello, Dr. Noob here again. So, first of all, Happy New Year for everybody. Uh, well, I'm sorry I had so um, little time lately to uh, upload some videos, but now I'm back here again. I had a lot of family things to do, as you can imagine. Well, anyhow, we want today to give our character some attacks. Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, what I want to do is for our bunny here to give her a little attack area. So a melee attack. So when she attacks, then there will be a box appearing where she will make the damage. Now, I have found the optimal way to deal with the box because sometimes it's very hard to position the box in the right place. So let me show you what I do. So the first thing I do in here is to get a good sprite. So because in here you will not see where the punch goes or the malate attack or if you have a sword then a sword attack. So therefore um, please go to your player, go to the sprite render and you see in here at the moment if I click here on idle zero, oops, sorry. If I click on idle zero, you see this is the sprite that I'm using at the moment. But we have here under attack one, which I think this one or this one should be better. So let's drag and drop it in here. So much better. Now we see until where the punch will go. So in my case, I would say something like this would be the damage area. Now what we would need to do is to create a game object with the melee weapon attached to this um, to this game object. But uh, in order to position it very well I will create here under player a new game object and it will be the melee still not sure if I'm pronouncing melee right. Good. Now that we have the melee, then I can add the component, which is the melee weapon. Uh -huh. And now you see we have here the tag box, which is definitely not what we want to have. Let's configure it. Uh, well, the first thing I want to do is, uh, well, actually to edit this uh, box in here, which is under the melee damage area. Um, well, it has some new changes, because here you uh, have the possibility to generate the box or use an existing one. And then you would need to bring your own area. In my case I want to generate it and I have here the possibility to have a circle. Uh, so let's say if I want to, I don't know, maybe have a spin kick or something like that. Uh, but in my case rectangle is good enough. Now what we need to do is to have the right um, area size and position for it. So. I just start to fool around. Something like that. And move it in here. Yeah, we are not far away. Yeah. Now, I think I want to have it a little bit bigger. Let's say 0 0.5 and here move it to 0 0.1 or something. Well, that doesn't look very bad, does it? So this would be the melee area. Um, but no, to be honest, I would like to make it bigger than the pixel itself. It somehow is more um, rewarding for the player if the damage area is quite 0 0.2. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Yeah, let's keep that. 
Okay, so now the tricky part about um, creating the damage area has been completed. So um, for the rest of the settings I would like to test them while I'm playing. Therefore I will do the following. I will go here to my prefabs where our player is and I drag and drop this and make a prefab out of it. So the melee attack here. Um, and I delete it from our player because it's not needed anymore. So here we have uh, the melee weapon and here we have the player. And what we are missing at the moment for the player uh, is that he can um, shoot something. And I know it's confusing to use the word shoot, um, but well, it's a weapon. In, in our case. So the character handle weapon needs to be activated and we need to drag and drop the weapon to it. So we go in here to the melee attack and move it in here. Good, so now it's set up. So now we have our player with the character handle weapon and the melee attached to it, so I would like to see that. Uh, in order to see that really in here, you need well to click on play and make sure that you have here the player activated because only then you can see the red uh, damage area. You see, if I leave it be, it's even one second and he repeats, you see, one second, one second, one second. Okay, so um, let's get started with the configuration and I tell you why he was repeating the melee attack. So the reason he was uh, or she was attacking the whole time is because we have here the trigger mode automatic. So in my case, I want to have it semi-automatic. So you need to know that this weapon is um, inherited from the weapon, which is normally a gun or something like that. Well, that's why you have here magazine and hands position and stuff like that, which is not really needed for a melee attack. So semi-auto is... Um, for me the best way to go. So which means uh, if I go now to play and I click on a button and leave it be, then he doesn't appear again like before. Good. And the next thing is if you want to have a delay before use, uh, again this is something I don't need for a melee attack. I want, if I click on it, just, just right away start with the damage. If um, you are using, let's say, a weapon which you need to charge or something like that, you can um, change that. In my case, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, I also, the delay before use, release interruption. Uh, well, I'm not sure if I should leave that be or not. I leave it be at the moment. And uh, time between uses, uh, so between the first and the second melee or even between the fourth and the fifth melee attack, uh, how many time you want to have in between so that you cannot constantly um, have here an attack. So let's say if I put here something like 0.1 then in uh, automatic, then he will shoot the whole time, more or less. I think uh, 0.5 would make sense in uh, my case. And um, do I want to have a time between use release interruption? No, because, well, you can have an interruption of your melee attack. But in my case, I don't want to have an interruption. So if I click on a button, it's only 0 0.3 seconds long, the animation more or less, then I will stick to this melee attack. If you want to have it interrupted, well, then you can tweak those here. Uh, yes, that's for the general settings. 
Um, the next few uh, configurations are actually not really... Um, doesn't really make too much sense for me if I'm using a Malaya tech. Again, this is an inherited uh, script, so this is made for every weapon. But I don't want to have a magazine if it's about a punch. If I would like to say uh, we have a limited punch, then I can maybe activate the magazine. But nah, I don't want to have that. I also know don't need a position for it because it's not a sword or something like that. Uh, I also don't want to have the hands position and the movement is also absolute uh, for me because um, let's say if you are carrying a heavy weapon then you can say well modify the movement while equip equipped uh, so then you can say well I want that uh, he can only run a two because it's so heavy this uh, weapon yeah once again, I don't think that we need to tweak any of those around. Uh, the animation is if you have a dedicated animator for it. I also will not use a dedicated animator. I will use the player's animator. The, anima the, uh, the animation parameters and the feedbacks, those are needed in my case. But I will go later into them. Uh, one video will be about animation itself, that's very complicated, so I will leave all those for this uh, tutorial that I will make. The same for the feedbacks. So let me surprise you. Uh, recoil is definitely not needed for a melee attack and we have the melee damage area already set up, so nothing to do there. Here we have the melee damage area timing. So here we can have something like a, a small delay. Let's say if my punch, uh, let's say my arm goes shortly back before he or she punches, then I can make here something like initial delay. I will not have here the initial delay. And the duration of one second is far too long for just a kick. Oh yeah, sorry, for a punch. So I think 0 0.3 will make sense. Um, so here, once again, this is something that you need to make sure to uh, tweak around for your game. So depending on your pace, on your kick or punch or whatever you like to add in here, that's something you will definitely tweak around and believe me I will also tweak around later with it. But 0 0.3 is a good punch time. And oh yes and here comes the big one, the melee damage cost. So now we can say how much damage um, the player should make when using the melee and what uh, target he wants to use. So nothing is definitely not the layer I would like to attack, so it will be the enemies. If I want later, let's say, um, have here some platforms which I can uh, which I can kick and uh, let's say open a wall or something like that, well I mean damage a wall and go then through the wall, then I can also uh, have here platforms or even dedicated uh, layer for that one. At the moment, enemies is good enough. And the same here for the damage cost. I think 10 is a good value. And you can also have something like, well, do something between 10 and 20. And so depending, maybe you're lucky, maybe you're not lucky and have something in between. But for me, uh, 10 is more than okay. And, and you have the possibility to have a knockback. So if he or she kicks somebody, maybe goes back a little bit. It's for me something like a recoil, but for the melee attack. You can use it. I will not use it in my case. Yes, I think that's it for the melee configuration.
maybe we should also look very quickly here under the player uh, under the character handle weapon you have the possibility to uh, tweak some things I mean the usual permissions and blocking movements and conditions are well always the same um, we have dragged and dropped the weapon here and we also say that we are able to pick up a weapon uh, which means if in a metroidvania it's very important to have this activated else you will stick with this melee weapon and that's it but maybe i want to have a bigger or higher punch or something like that then he can pick up that melee the new melee with the higher damage or wider range or whatever and um, well that's the that's a fun thing about the metroidvania so i leave that activated and uh, the binding of a weapon in my case as a, um, a melee weapon doesn't make sense to tweak here around for the I input and automation then yes so, um, well, okay, for a melee attack it's not really needed, but let's say if you press, you have the continuous press here, you press one time and then if it's an automated uh, weapon, then it will shoot the whole time. That's also not needed for our um, melee attack. You can, uh, so if getting hit can interrupt an attack or not, well, this is depending on your game. Uh, if you can use the melee attack from a ladder, <coughs> sorry, or not, it's up to you. And the face weapon direction or invert horizontal aim when wall clinging. Uh, none of them is really needed in my case. And the rest are the feedbacks, which will be covered in another video. Okay, I think I have covered the most important things for the melee weapon and the player. Yes, I was definitely uh, a little bit deeper in this video than I was on the last one that I did for the melee attack. So I hope that uh, you could learn something and I wish you all the best for this year and see you next time. Cheers!